that is dangerous when you fall into their hands. It's uh, like somebody who wants to catch a fish. You see that the hook is there and you just put something, a bait inside. And the moment the fish catches the bait, the hook takes it out. Their hook will not catch you. They want to take you out of the kingdom of God. They want to take you out of the fellowship of God. They want to take you out of where God has planted you. The truth of the word of God is a bait. And you see them almost everywhere. Their magazines, the best kind of color. Digital color you can ever think about. And you get to the Facebook, that's where you see them. It's a bait. You will avoid them. I say you will avoid them. You will not be a victim in Jesus' name. This was the beginning of, almost the beginning of the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. What did he say at the end of his, almost at the end of his ministry? Matthew chapter 24. Look at what he said. At the beginning, the Lord warned us of the danger of this false prophet. And shortly before he left, again, the same warning. In Matthew chapter 24, in verse 11, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. You see that? We are now in chapter 24, almost getting to the end of the mystery of the Lord. Warning before and warning almost where he was going. They will multiply. And what will be the consequence of their deception? Look at verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall was cold. You see that? And no people, because of what they now teach, many people are backsliding in droves. I was shocked when I had, I just stumbled at one of those uh, you know, ministers, prominent in our country here. I was talking about drinking is not you know, it's not sin. It's, uh, it's when you are able to control yourself. I said, what? And it's a celebrated so-called minister. I said, this is what these people are teaching. And so everybody that goes to that place now can just live for no, whatever, uh, any way they like. May God deliver us. I said, may God deliver us. So that's the thing. The Lord warned about the deception of false teachers. Number two, we look at the distortion, distortion of the full obed truth. You have seen that word, full obed, in our life magazine over and over. That's what it called the 22 doctrine. But you see, there are people that are distorting the full obed truth of the word of God. And the scripture seriously wants us. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, 1 Timothy chapter 4, we read that verse 1. Now, the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirit and doctrines of devils. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Doctrine of devils everywhere. They distort the word of God. They apply the, you know, the, 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 the devil to almost everything. Is demon. Is this one. I said they were given to doctrines of demons. Doctrines of devils. Almost every passage they quote, they begin to... What individual should take as his own responsibility? What the Bible calls sin, now they call it another name. That's the kind of distortion we find. When it comes to marriage, you see the way, and they begin to quote, the Lord, uh, the Bible says that uh, you can, if you are not ready to uh, live with that woman, you can separate and go and marry other one. You can see that. That's the kind of distortion we see today. And they said there is no need for restitution just because they said the grace has covered everything. Some even say the sin that you commit in the future, great has covered it. The Lord deliver us who will not be victim of, of them in Jesus' name. So it says there, doctrines of devils are flying everywhere. 
And he says, that's what will happen in the last days. Second Timothy chapter 4. The distortion of the full obed truth. Chapter 4, verse 3. Here it says us, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own laws shall they keep to themselves teachers having it in here, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Therefore, he now counsel Timothy, but watch thou in all things. He said, this is what will be happening in the last days. They will distort the sound doctrine of the word of God to suit their own purpose. And they will be interpreting it just to suit what they want. What they want to hear, not what the Lord commands. That's the kind of distortion we see today. Number three, we see the danger of following adulterated teachers or adulterated teaching too. The danger of following adulterated teachers or teaching. What's the danger? In Jude, verse 1, chapter 1, rather, Jude, only one chapter, in verse 12. Jude, chapter 1, verse 12. These are spot in your feast of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, Clouds they are without water, carry the bout of wings, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the root. Verse 13, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness for how many years? Forever. That's the danger. That's the danger. The false teachers and the adulterated teaching, when somebody follows after them, the danger is going to be eternal damnation forever and ever. You will not follow them. I say you will not follow them. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 18. Second Peter chapter 2. Here it tells us in verse 18. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they are lured through the loss of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escape from them who live in error. Why they promise them liberty? They themselves are the servants of corruption. For whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. He now says in verse 20, for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. So you can see the Bible is warning us here about the danger of following them. Whoever follows false teachers and follows doctrine, their end point is perdition. And I pray for you, you will not perish with them. So we must understand the alarm and the siren that is blowing concerning the danger of corrupting the truth, the word of God, in the last days. The Lord deliver us in Jesus' name. Point number two, our decision and conviction about the truth. Now that we have seen what is happening today, we have to take a decision. And we must have conviction if we are going to stand in this last day. Let's hear what Solomon tells us in Proverbs chapter 23, verse 23. Cancel as well as command for us. Proverbs chapter 23, here it tells us in verse 23. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Buy the truth 
and don't sell it for anything whatsoever. And here we are, by the grace of God. What does it mean? You have your Bible, a copy of the Bible, and uh, you buy all the materials that we are having. We have the magazines, we have the women mirror, we have the books. You spend some money to buy. Quite all right. You are a child of God. And the truth that you have known over the years, don't sell it for anything whatsoever. You know that this is the guarantee of getting to heaven at last. That's why Solomon is saying here, buy the truth and don't sell it. No, don't sell it. Make sure you hold on to the truth all the days of your life. You will not sell your conscience. You will not sell your salvation. The Lord will help us. Quickly, we we'll look at three things. Number one, the conviction of faithful saints. As we look at both Old and the New Testament of the Scripture, we see the conviction of the saints that have gone before us. Let's look at John chapter 6. John's Gospel chapter 6. In verse 67, verse 67 of John chapter 6. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Here was at the time. When the Lord fed the 5,000, multitudes were following him when they saw the miracles. But at the time when he started teaching them the nitty-gritty of the gospel, the depth of the gospel, and now they now felt, how can we eat this man? He's talking about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. You have no life in me. Instead of asking for clarification, they took offense. And eventually, the Bible says, many of them went back. The Lord now turned to the twelve. Look at verse 68. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then, verse 68, Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and assure that thou art that Christ the son of the living God. There are two things in that verse 69. Number one, we believe. Number two, we are sure. That's what that second statement talks about, conviction. Conviction. And you see many people today, they have a lot of things they believe. It's like, I hope you know, if any Christian body wants to register with CAC, that's the Corporate Affairs Commission. You have to bring what you believe. You will write what you believe to ensure that you don't have any statement that will destabilize the country. You want to find out, and they will cross-check. So you see, people will state their tenets of faith real. We believe in Christ. We believe in salvation. We believe in sanctification. We believe in holiness. We are not going to be, you know, in faithfulness. You know, uh, husband faithful to the wife. What they believe, they will write it. That this is what we believe. But are they sure of what they have written down? That's where conviction actually comes in. That is, you believe, number one, and you are sure of what you believe. The Lord help us. You'll be sure of what you believe. I said you'll be sure of what you believe. That's what we call conviction. That's what Peter said there. He said, Lord, we believe. We don't just believe that you are no, the Lord, you are Jesus, the Son of God. We are sure. You'll be sure of every part of the word of God from Genesis to Revelation. May that conviction and assurance May heaven drop to your soul in Jesus' name. Psalm 119, the conviction of 
faithful saying that have gone before us. In Psalm 190, here it tells us in verse 160. Psalm 119, verse 160. Thy word is true from the beginning. And every one of thy righteous judgment endureth forever. That's the confession of the, you know, of the writer of this psalm. The word is true from Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to Revelation 22, 21. Every judge, every title, oh Lord, I take as the truth. That's the conviction that the psalmist has. Verse 142. Verse 142, thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Thy law is the truth. Verse 151, thou art near, O Lord, and all thy commandments are truth. That's the kind of conviction. Every part of the word of God is true. When you read, possibly, or maybe when you hear from the pulpit, and you don't understand. You see, you don't fight with the word of God. You go to, you know, those people who know more than you. Ask questions about this thing. You see, but you get to a point in your life whereby you believe in the totality, in the inerrancy of the word of God. That the word of God has no, no uh, kind of failure, has no, uh, it's not corrupted, it is perfect. That's why the Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. We must have that conviction from time to time that the word of God is true. Not only have it, may the Holy Ghost seal that conviction in your heart in Jesus' name. Number two, our consistency in following the standard. Our consistency, not that we started some years ago, not at all, in following the standard of the word of God. When we started a few years ago, we were so committed to the word of God. But as modernization is coming, and we begin to see a lot of things. And we see increase in technology and knowledge. And now we have Christians here and there. We start shifting our ground. We are coming back today. I say we are coming back today. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 15. Our consistency in following the standard. The standard of the word of God. In verse 15 of first. Timothy, here Paul the Apostle was telling Timothy, meditate upon these things. Give thyself only to them that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. The Lord will help us. The challenge we have here is this. Timothy came to the company, the missionary company of Paul the Apostle at the beginning of the second missionary journey. And they went through the second missionary journey, went through the third missionary journey, and after that, Paul wanted to write to Timothy with all the association with him. He still reminded him the danger and said, all the things, meditate on them. Give yourself wholly unto them and make sure you continue. That's why you discover in the church, the emphasis has been righteousness, holiness, faithfulness, commitment, consecration. You may wonder why we have to be emphasizing.